Now here's where things get a little complicated because in the 400 years before Jesus arrived to fulfill the prophecy of a new covenant, a group of strict religious Jews came to the fore called the Pharisees. To their credit, they understood that Israel had fallen into ruins because the people had turned their back on God and brought poverty, sickness and terror upon themselves by their own disobedience. It was the people's own licentious living, sexual immorality, drunkenness and idol worship that had ruined the land. The Pharisees were determined that this was never going to happen again and they weren't about to sit around waiting for the Messiah. They were going to put things right by themselves in their own strength. Their solution? Their man-made solution? More laws, stricter laws, harsher laws. They were going to try to combat licentiousness with legalism. Now, as we know already, you can't make people good by law. You can't heal an essentially internal problem by trying to subdue the external behaviours, just as you can't cure an internally demonised person by pumping their external body with drugs. You're not dealing with the core issue that way. Giving more laws to a person with an unregenerate heart is just giving them more laws to break, so this man-made solution was always doomed to failure. But the thinking behind it was that if the people hadn't behaved under 613 rules, then they would behave under 800. And should they break these new laws, or twist or bend them, or find loopholes to exploit, they would then close those loopholes with even more laws, and if need be, more laws on top of those, and so on and so on. The idea is that if people don't act the right way by their own volition, they can be restricted and controlled and forced into acting the right way by law. At that point, a good society would emerge that God would approve of. Indeed, the thought process was that they would gain some kind of extra credit with God if they went above and beyond the obligations of the original 613 laws. The more laws they kept to prove their devotion to God, the more he would love them. That was the thinking. Here they turned the law into a system of merit. They thought that they could earn their way to heaven by their own law-keeping efforts. So over time, the Pharisees added to the written law of Moses with their own man-made rules in an attempt to earn God's favour, and this became known as the Oral Law. To give an example of how this worked, the written law of Moses had originally said not to do any work on the Sabbath. That was the fourth of the Ten Commandments. For most people, that meant taking a break from their everyday job. But then the Pharisees came along and said, that's not enough. To be super dedicated to God, to make God really love you the most, you should not even lift anything burdensome on the Sabbath, because lifting counts as work. But then that threw up another question. What constitutes a burden? Could they lift up their child? Could they lift up a leaf? Did that count as work? So they needed more laws to define what was meant by the word burden. They defined it as food and weight equal to a dried fig, wine enough for a mixing goblet, milk enough for one swallow, ink enough to write two letters of the alphabet, and so on. But then that raises more questions like, how big can this mixing goblet be? Is there a standardised measurement? And what constitutes a swallow of milk? And so on and so on. Rules begets rules begets rules. You can see how ridiculous and arbitrary this became. All of a sudden, people were being castigated for legally carrying two glasses of milk on the Sabbath or scandalously lifting up their child to give them a cuddle. Someone was considered cut off from God because they'd lifted up a handful of dried figs. The silliness of it is almost laughable, but this became religion to the Jews, a swamp of petty rules and regulations with sub-rules and sub-sub-rules and sub-sub-sub-rules, until there were so many rules that they were submerged under their oppressive weight, and where God was thought to hate you for lifting up a jug of milk on the wrong day. As we found out earlier, we call this kind of religion legalism. Legalism is trying to get right with God using law or rule-keeping. Using our language of symbols, the Pharisees did something like this. They really thickened up that left-hand bar by creating a myriad of new rules on neutral issues to try to restrict, coerce and control the people. What you could lift, wear, eat at different times on different days. Paul wrote about this kind of legalism saying, These rules may seem wise because they require strong devotion, pious self-denial and severe bodily discipline, but they provide no help in conquering a person's evil desires. Again, law doesn't impart righteousness. The heart sickness still remained. So not only was the legalism of the Pharisees outrageously silly and petty, but it was ultimately futile. 
They were trying to cure an internal heart problem with external rules, and all it did was make the people hard-hearted. It led to a situation where people refused to give their child a cuddle on the Sabbath because lifting them could be deemed as breaking the rules. It meant refusing to help injured people on the street for the same reason. It meant shunning friends because they'd lifted up a jug of milk. People under legalism become more concerned with obeying the letter of the law than showing love, kindness and mercy to one another. The Bible records Jesus and his disciples walking through a field of grain around lunchtime on the Sabbath, and being hungry, they began eating some of the grain as they went. The Pharisees saw this and were furious, calling it harvesting, in other words, work. That they would rather people go hungry than break their petty rules displays the hard-heartedness of legalism. It leads to cold and loveless behaviour where petty rule observance is esteemed more highly than warm, compassionate love. What's worse is that legalists think that God approves of this behaviour. As well as hard-heartedness, legalism leads to pride. It drives people into competition with one another. You keep 602 laws, do you? Well, I keep 608. God must love me more. You lift up a milk jug on the Sabbath, do you? I won't even lift up a glass. That's how pious I am. The Pharisees looked down on those who didn't keep the rules as well as they did because they perceived such people to be further down the table of merit. They competed to make public shows of their good deeds just to make sure everyone else could see how pious and loved by God they were. When they fasted, they made sure everyone knew about it. They would go out in public deliberately looking dishevelled and sick to emphasise their lack of sustenance. When they gave donations to charity, they made sure that everyone knew just how much they were giving. Such things became a method of gaining esteem in the community, and so they became more worried about what men thought of them than God. All of this behaviour was fuelled by pride. It was such pride that meant they didn't want to associate with people who they perceived to be beneath them. The Pharisees didn't have much time for the lowly people in society. Falsely imagining themselves to be righteous and accepted by God because of the many rules they kept, they had no time for those they considered unrighteous like the prostitutes and beggars and other sinners. They completely lost sight of what the law had been for. The law had been designed to show Israel that everyone has sinned and everyone has fallen short of God's perfect standard and that no one can reach holiness by their own efforts. Though the Pharisees kept 612 of the laws and all these prostitutes and beggars kept just one, they were all still in the exact same boat. All were under the curse of death, all completely cut off from God. None of them were in a position to boast. The only way to satisfy the law is to keep it perfectly and no one could actually do that. The Pharisees had missed the point of the law completely. Here they thought their good deeds were earning their way into heaven, when in fact God was so stunningly holy and so perfect that their best good deeds were like filthy rags compared to his righteousness, like 4am skies compared to midday skies. But perhaps the biggest problem with legalism is that it leads to hypocrisy. The legalist pride demands that they maintain an outward show of superior discipline and good deeds, but their inner sinful nature, their heart sickness, remains, meaning that they are physically incapable of keeping the increasing mountain of burdens and rules that they are imposing upon themselves. So the gap between who they claim to be on the outside and who they really are on the inside begins to widen. They are under increasing pressure to hide their true selves from the world, and it becomes a burden to them. They do anything to sustain the facade, to protect their public image, to cover up their sin from the eyes of the world, to keep their pride and social standing intact, but inside they are completely unchanged. For this reason, the Pharisees gradually became all show and no substance. It should be noted that the biggest opposition to Jesus didn't come from lowly sinners, it came from the Pharisees, the legalists, the ones who thought they had more religion than anyone. And it was the Pharisees for whom Jesus reserved his harshest words of criticism. In fact, he frequently referred to them as hypocrites and even called them sons of hell. He called them whitewashed tombs which looked nice on the outside but inside were full of decay and impurity. He also likened them to unwashed cups which looked clean on the outside but inside were full of dirt, greed and self-indulgence. Jesus didn't hold back with these guys. Paul wrote about them saying, You are so proud of knowing the law but you dishonour God by breaking it. The world blasphemes the name of God because of you. Paul acknowledged that where non-Christians see this kind of hypocritical religion that has no substance, it turns people away from God.
I have friends who were brought up under the oppressive weight of heavy legalism in a group called the Brethren. They were banned from doing anything on a Sunday, no sport, no activity of any kind, not even washing the dirty dishes. They had to wear suits for the entire day, anything else was considered sinful. At Christmas, their parents would go to religious conferences to keep up appearances instead of spending time with their children. TVs and video games were not allowed in the house. The hypocrisy of that was that when they wanted to watch something, they would just go to someone else's house and watch it there instead. All this meant that they could make an outward show of piety to their religious visitors by pointing out that they didn't have a TV, but all the while they were just popping out to watch their shows elsewhere when it suited them. A kind of comical charade developed where everyone in the church knew about each other's hypocrisy, but no one would say a word about it because they were secretly doing the exact same thing. The bubble of illusion that pride had created couldn't be punctured. When, eventually, my friend's parents caved in and bought a TV of their own and allowed video games, they still hid it out of sight to keep the illusion going. As I said, this hypocrisy was going on amongst the entire congregation. Furthermore, many of them worked as fishermen and whilst at home they would keep the mask of piety on for the community. As soon as they went to sea they would indulge in smoking, drinking and swearing. As soon as they felt free of having to maintain a social facade, their real, inner, unchanged selves came to the fore. They were hypocrites, whitewashed tombs, unwashed cups, and it was that harsh, hard-hearted legalism and prideful hypocrisy that turned those friends off God. Paul's words are true. The world blasphemes God because of such hypocritical legalism. Jesus said of the Pharisees, The teachers of religious law and the Pharisees crush you with impossible religious demands and never lift a finger to help ease the burden. Everything they do is for show. On their arms they wear extra wide prayer boxes with scripture verses inside and they wear extra long tassels on their robes. And how they love to sit at the head table in banquets and in the most prominent seats in the synagogue. They enjoy the attention they get on the streets and they enjoy being called rabbi. How terrible it will be for you teachers of religious law and the Pharisees. Hypocrites. Again, you have to understand that these people thought that God loved them the most. They prided themselves on the fact that they knew more about the law than anyone, and they prided themselves that they kept all these extra man-made rules. So imagine how shocked and infuriated they were when Jesus came along saying, their worship is a farce and they teach man-made ideas as commands from God and then went on to tell them that they were in fact the furthest from God, that they were sons of hell and the worst of all hypocrites. Legalists to this day are exactly the same. They teach man-made ideas as though they are commands from God and imagine that he must love them the most because they keep the most rules. They are proud and hypocritical people. But always remember that Jesus was opposed most fiercely by and reserved his harshest words for legalists, not for sinners.